Hi everybody, I'm Nina with Sharing a Journey and today I have five tips to help your makeup look better and help you look more polished, elegant, and beautiful. Now some might say these would be sort of anti-aging tips um, but I think that generally things that I would suggest as a mature woman would go across the board pretty much with a couple of exceptions. But I just wanted to share with you a couple of things, actually there are five, um, that will make your makeup look so much better and make you look amazing. So the first I want, to, the, the first tip <laughs> is to wear a primer. Now today I'm wearing the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. It's a primer that I have been using uh, for about a year. Uh, I like it because it's lightweight. It doesn't seem to cause problems with my skin. Some primers do. Um, and it also helps to sort of blur uh, the larger pores that I have on my cheeks or the texture. Um, in the areas like here where I have some wrinkling and the texture on my cheeks and it just makes makeup go on so much more smoothly and more flawlessly and I think that you know as we get older and have a little bit more texture on our skin uh, it, these little extra steps really help now the other the next tip I'm going to give you is to use a lighter foundation. I like full coverage. However, I found that full coverage tends to look more like a mask on mature women uh, because our skin does have that texture and I think the skin does change and I don't know whether I would call it thinned, but maybe that's what it is. But it just seems like when I wear the heavier foundations, like, um, uh, you know, the full coverage ones, that it just, it looks like it's sitting on the top of my skin. Now this thinner foundation that I'm using, and I've uh, talked about this before in prior videos, this is the uh, Dior face and body, oh, what a mess. It's near the bottom and I have it like upside down. So I have quite a lot, you know, that's sort of drained out. Um, I like to try to use every drop up. I'm just gonna kind of go in and do a little touching up in places that I think I did, you know, that in my little quick application that I didn't get, it's not too bad. Um, that I didn't get good coverage on. Let's just tap that out and make that nice. Now the next tip that I have for you is to use a brush and a magnifying mirror. That way you can kind of see where you got coverage and where you might need a little extra help. Like I can see the red around my nose that I want to sort of cancel out. This area here needs a little extra help. And I'm going to blend that a little bit because again it's texture and if you don't blend it out then the the foundation just sort of sits on the top of the texture and then it makes the wrinkles or what's underneath it, if it's wrinkles or large pores, they show more. Um, either A, because the foundation is, sits down in it or B, because it didn't get in it, it's just sitting on the top and then you can kind of see it. So either way, it's not good and you kind of need a makeup mirror in order to tell how that's looking. Tip number three. I think we're on number three, aren't we? That's where we talk about the application of concealer. And the way that I used to use concealer, because I used to see a lot of beauty videos where they would apply a huge triangle under the eye. Um, 
I don't do that anymore. I do the concealer where I need it, where it's actually really dark. And then from there, I blend it out under the eye. So I'm using this blending brush. And this is a nice blending brush. This one is from IT Cosmetics. And I really like it. I've talked about it in previous videos. It was a game changer for me. So this eye is done. And the other benefit of seeing it in the magnifying mirror is that you can kind of see that you got even coverage because that's another aspect of this is that I find that sometimes no matter how I try I sort of get a little bit of a patchy coverage and so you can go in and correct that um, but you need the you need the magnifying mirror in order to be able to do that so I'm going to do the same to the other eye and just sort of go and apply the concealer heavily where the eye is darker and I'm just going to tap over here where I can now see on the other eye that it's a little bit dark okay so one of the difficulties I think as a mature woman has been the dark circles under my eyes or the darkness and part of it is caused because our, I think our skin is thinner they say but I've also noticed that mine get really dark if I don't get enough sleep and they also get dark if I have an, uh, an allergy and right now this time of year I have allergies quite quite profoundly so that is that so I've now got the concealer under my eyes the way I like it the next thing that I have talked about before is using a little setting powder and I like to just go in really lightly with a natural bristle brush and just sort of tap it in place really nicely so that it sets and then later I'm going to just sort of there blend it out using a setting powder I know that a lot of women are nervous about setting powders because they think that the setting powder is going to make them look cakey but if you use a small amount using a natural bristle brush it blends out nicely and you know from here it just gives a very nice smooth appearance okay tip number four I think we're on number four is not to contour um, as we get older a lot of times our faces get more gaunt and so if you're also trying to contour like we did when we were younger it just draws more attention to uh, the fact that there that there's been changes in the underlying um, musculature and fats and everything else that kind of make our faces look like they did when they were younger. So instead of doing a contouring, I'm just going to take a big soft brush and this is bronzer and I'm just going to bronze my cheeks in sort of larger sweeping motions and then come to the sides and just, it just it does give my face some definition from being just white, you know, um, to kind of adding a little bit more. It just naturally adds a little bit more um, oh, structure to the face, but not a chiseled hard um, structure. And so it just gives you kind of a healthier, glowier look. The next thing I like to do is add a little bit of blush. Now my daughter always tells me that the blush is for old women, that old women wear blush, <laughs> like me. Um, but now younger women are wearing it again. It comes and goes in fashions. Today I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury blush and I chose it today purposely because it's the other blush that I usually like to wear this time of year. It's not, um, 
it's not available anymore. And this one is, this one is the Chic, cheek to Chic um, Love Glow. It is the, um, the product that they, you know, kind of has the uh, outer side has a shimmer and then the inner side has a kind of um, more of a, mm, it's not shimmery, <laughs> not shimmery. So I like to just sort of come to the apples of my cheeks and just sort of do circular motions and just sort of create a glowing kind of a look here. And again, you know, drawing it to the back of my cheek. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of coming along here, but I'm not specifically creating anything. I'm just kind of blending the color to the skin. So then you get sort of a finished look that is soft. It sends the message that there is structure, but it's a soft, beautiful, glowing look as opposed to kind of more of a sophisticated um, kind of look that I would have worn when I was younger. The final area that we often have struggles in, wow, look what I just did to this. I just, <laughs> I had this little cloth where all of that extra foundation that I just spilled all over the table. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to clean it up and make more of a mess. So I'm going to use a very neutral, I always wear neutral um, eyeshadows. I rarely um, wear bright colors. Uh, I just think I, again, like to accent my eye color and accent my look rather than make a statement. Um, so I'm going to be using this Marc Jacobs uh, palette. I told Roger I wasn't going to hold up makeup <laughs> when we were setting this up today the film the camera <laughs> when we were setting up the camera I said I don't want to hold up makeup I don't like to do that so he set everything up so that it would be better filming if you didn't and then what do I do I turn around to do it anyway this is a really beautiful neutral palette and um, so then this sort of brings up the next kind of important thing that um, we need to be mindful of as we get older. Um, I just looked at my eyelids and I, and I noticed that they are a bit discolored. I didn't apply any, um, uh, any makeup to them. And so I'm gonna use the concealer really quickly. Um, and sometimes I use powder, most of the time I use powder but I put all the makeup away just a few minutes ago so that I would have just what I was gonna work with so that I would stay right on point. And I obviously have not stayed on point or, well, I guess I am on point, but then I just didn't have what I needed because my makeup bag is in the bathroom. Okay, so what I just did was I took concealer and I applied it to my eyelid and now I'm just gently blending it out to make sure that it is, there's no weird things going on. And the reason I'm doing that is twofold. One, because you get a smoother application. And two, because then it allows the color to show true. Um, otherwise, it's the color that you're applying in eyeshadow is kind of, competes with the color of the lid of your eyes. And in my case, it's sort of a purpley kind of color. So if you cancel that out, then you get this really pretty brown color that's actually in the makeup kit, what we bought the makeup for, right? Because we thought the color was nice. I'm just going to the crease area and focusing on the crease and up and just to below the, the brow bone. And this brings up the final, or no, I've got one more tip, um, but I've lost count. <laughs> um, the final couple of tips, um, and that is the blending of eyeshadow and the blending of your makeup to make sure that there aren't those like rough edges and crazy 
um, things that are going to be really distracting when people look at you. Um, that I find, you know, is one of the things that I see a lot. I'm going to take a um, kind of another brown that's not really a dark brown. It's sort of a middle brown. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a lift in the outer edge and just draw upward. This is one area where, and I've mentioned this before, because there's not really, I don't really have a lot of new information um, about makeup except that, um, you know, except just the things that I try. But in terms of application, you want to blend and make sure everything's nicely blended. One of the other things I see women our age doing is when it comes to lining the eyes. Oftentimes uh, we are still using the blacks and a really harsh line instead of a softer line. And um, it draws attention to the fact that as we get older, a lot of times our eyes are a little bit smaller. It draws attention to the fact that the, the waterline and everything is not as smooth as it once was. And instead of really doing the drama that we were hoping it would or that it did when we were younger, it just sort of, you know, kind of highlights all of the things that we don't want to be highlighting. I'm going with the dark brown, not the black, and I'm going to be using an eyeliner brush for powder. This is a Wayne Doss um, brush, and essentially it's flat, and all you do is just sort of gently press it along the lash line, and then I'm going to take a pencil brush, I think, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a pencil brush if I can find one. Here's one, yay. So I'm gonna take the pencil brush and just sort of blend it out a little bit and then blend it upward. And so that you get, you get the same effect. It's just a, sort of a softened, kind of more blurred line. And so it doesn't, it does the same thing, meaning it brings out your eye and helps it to, to kind of pop. And it brings out the color, which is another reason why we like to do liner. And it also gives the lash line kind of a thicker, kind of more lush look. So um, that's sort of how I do the liner and then I just sort of draw upward and then blend it out and usually I do it with my finger or one of these little pencil brushes and it sort of gives you that hint without coming right out and saying it that's like a southern girl thing um, so anyway I'm just gonna gel my brows and That's another, another thing that we often do is our brows can sometimes be too dark and too severe. And so I oftentimes just go ahead and just use a gel rather than a complete um, kind of color them in and so forth. If you don't have brows at all and they definitely need to be colored in, then by all means, you know, color them in. The final thing, that I think that we often do because it was a huge trend when we were younger is the lip lining. So I have this Clinique Chubby pencil and it's one of my favorites. It's in the, it's called Whole Lot of Honey and there are two of these chubby pencils that I keep on rotation. They are a nice moisturizing, uh, product they stand decently the colors that Clinique 
uses or the pigments are really beautiful and kind of universal so they look really pretty on a lot of people and um and so i'm going to show you how i go about lining um now so this is the mac um spice pencil this is from the 90s i still use it and i put the lipstick on first and then the liner And so they sort of make the line, but it blends together. So you get the benefit of the liner. Let me just do this for you. So you get the benefit of the liner, but it doesn't make that dark, dark ring around your mouth. And if you have a liner that, you know, or you have that where your lipstick goes away from the liner, then you can always just kind of come in and give your lips a little bit of liner mixed into the lipstick. So as the lipstick wears off, then you don't have that transition so much um, that you do if you just line the outside of your lips. So the tips there would be make sure that the liner is very similar to the color that you're going to be using. Number two, apply your lipstick first and then the liner after. And number three, um, add in a little bit or shade in at the outer edges in particular the lip line into the lip the lip liner into the lip and you'll have a long wearing and uh, much more natural but still really great look so this put together this is my look for today um, and some tips that I hope will help and I am wishing you the most happiest of days. I hope I'll see you next time.